Hey, hey, hey! Are you ready for another sketchbook tour? I'm so happy that you're here and I want to share my sketchbook pages from this wonderful sketchbook. My name is Koosje Koene and I love drawing and well, it shows because I keep filling sketchbook after sketchbook. And I share my experiences here on YouTube and hopefully that inspires you into your own sketchbook habit. Last week I showed you this tiny little sketchbook and now I want to show you this one. Okay, before we dive into my sketchbook, which has drawings from a recent trip, I want to tell you about an in-person workshop that I will be doing in Santa Fe in the US. It will be in May this year. And it's the only time that I will be teaching in the US for quite a while. So if you want to learn how to draw your surroundings when you're on location and include people, then this is your workshop in the US. There are just a few spots left still, so don't hesitate too long and come join me in Santa Fe in April. Okay, on with the sketchbook tour. Now I want to show you this one. I started it somewhere in December and ended in January, all during my vacation. And um, there's some really good stories in there. Let's dive right in. I filled this sketchbook from December 2023 to January 2024. This is an Etcher sketchbook. It's 100% cotton paper. The size is B5 and I think it's hot press, but I'm not entirely sure. I got this as a present, this sketchbook, and I was very, very thankful for it because it's a wonderful sketchbook. And after that smaller sketchbook that I showed you yesterday, I was so happy to draw bigger again. This is the first page where I always put my contact details and I sort of made it a tradition to draw my hands as they are drawing. It's a fantastic exercise and I enjoy doing it. I was on vacation and you can see that I had a lot of time because I drew this whole pattern and I had fun doing it. It's uh, done with crayon. So in last week's sketchbook tour, we ended with a travel page with airport faces. And here I'm still at an airport. I drew the people waiting to board and I picked a limited palette again. I used blue and purplish gray and a little bit of pink. And I think that works really well instead of trying to mimic all the colors people were wearing. I like the cohesive kind of feeling and you don't always need to be that literal when you are drawing. And then we are in Trat for a day. And we were at this market and food court where we had an amazing meal. And as I was drawing this place, the guy, the cook was coming to see what I was doing and giving me a thumbs up and there were more people just gathering around. And I love these kinds of little connections. They didn't even speak much English. I don't speak a lot of Thai except for thank you and hello. And it was just so much fun to smile at each other and just enjoy the creative process together. I love the connection that you can have with strangers when you draw, even if it's just for a minute. Oh, and here, I had some fun uh, making collage on the plane. A little bit weird maybe, but I used the sick bag, which was a gorgeous color blue, and another bill that I kept. So I did some collage and of course I knew that we were going to go to an island where there are very bright blue sea views. So I was really happy with the color of the sick bag and glued it in. And once we arrived on Ko Chang, and we arrived at our resort and settled down, I drew this gorgeous, gorgeous view that we had. And you can see that I have been playing a lot with limited palettes. And I think when I use collage, I choose a palette already, and then I base the rest of my drawing on that palette. Maybe introducing an extra color, like here, orange. Here I'm drawing on the boat. Oh yes, I loved doing that. And I was drawing as we were moving. So the view in the background was just moving all the time. It's not an accurate drawing of the existing view. It's just some bits and pieces that I sort of Frankensteined together. It's like a sketch collage, I guess. And here you can see that I have some stickers 
The pink ones are stickers that we had on our chest for our transfer from the ferry and this is a sticker from an apple. It's just small mementos, small little things that I like to keep and then use in my sketchbook. The pink is very, very bright. I don't know if it distracts too much, but who cares? I mean, I had so much fun on the boat drawing. I'm really happy that our boatsmen are in there and they were fishing in the meantime and napping and we did some snorkeling in that beautiful blue water with the fantastic fish around us. I will never forget because of this drawing. This is a drawing in our room. And here I'm studying the jungle. I mean, come on, Thailand is so beautiful. And I really enjoyed playing with watercolor, layering watercolors, and then layering colored pencils on top. And there's also some white crayon on top for some contrast. And this is a page I filled on different moments of the day. I drew this in the restaurant of our resort. Then later on, I drew my husband. I played with color and crayons. And then to fill up the rest, I added some notes and then also our room key. Oh, and this is really wonderful. We were drinking really good coffee in one of the most beautiful places. This was like a secret garden kind of feeling. The lady that you can see here kneeling in front, she was the owner and she was opening coconuts to drink. And here are the coconuts on the branch still. I loved seeing that process. Very good vibe in here with lots of jungle green in the background and I had so much fun drawing all of it. The view from our room was sort of towards the back of the kitchen of the restaurant in the resort. And of course, I started drawing this thinking, oh, this is fun drawing. When again, it started to become dark. Darkness felt so sudden, I just am not used to that. And I also forgot about the time, so I had no idea what time it was and if it would be dark soon. Anyway, I tried to still capture all of it while I couldn't see everything so well because it was so dark, but I really like how the light peeps through here and you see that there's something going on here in the back in the restaurant. So. Yeah, not my best drawing, but a good one to learn a thing or two about drawing at night. Well, what can I say? It's just a beautiful place where we were staying next. We were right up at the beach in a cabin. And I feel so lucky that I could have a vacation like this. And so, yeah, I sat down on the beach and I used my brush pen to draw the plants, the stones on the sand, on the beach, the people. And then I added color. And you can see here how I used a white crayon, which resists the watercolor because it's waxy. And then on top, I layered watercolor. And it gives a wonderful structure and the sort of the shimmering of the water. And here in the crack, you can see that on a different page, I had been adding a lot of yellow, which bled through. But well, that's what happens in a sketchbook, right? Let's not be too precious. Here I played with my coffee again. And do you remember last week how I showed you a page where I put down coffee stains and it was all a little bit confusing and much? Here I deliberately only chose to use black. So a brush pen as well as a colored pencil and that makes it all less confusing, more cohesive. The stains add to the drawing and I like that. These are some moments in the morning Oh, and this was the first day of the year, actually. Look at this view from our cabin. And I tried something that I haven't done before, or not that I can remember. Once I had drawn everything, I did a yellow wash on top of my drawing, let that dry, and then I added green on top. So that again, I had a limited palette, yellow and green, and then lots of shades of green. And because there was this one pink flower right in front of me, I added that. It's kind of in the middle of this drawing, so I don't know if I love it composition-wise. It's a little bit distracting, but I did want to add it. And well, you know, these are the things, again, you learn. In the back, I toned down the yellow wash a little bit with white crayon to show that there was a bright, clear sky. I think it's interesting. I think I need to practice this more. 
I love doing a wash first that gives like a whole vibe and cohesion to the drawing already before you paint the rest. It limits you a little bit and it stretches your creativity, I think. Drawing while we wait for our food. Not such a great drawing of the room we were in. All the proportions are off, but pff, I don't care. Sitting on that little porch that we had. Drawing my feet and all the stuff around us. Drawing my husband. And also, I added this a little bit later, by the end of our trip. I went back to this page because I knew there was room for it. I listed all the food that we ate that we will never forget or that we don't want to forget. So maybe there's just a little bit of space left here and maybe I should have drawn a little bit like barbecue fish or something, but I kind of forgot. And doing it now afterwards, meh, I don't really feel like it. The moment is gone. I filmed the whole process of this drawing for my patrons. So this is on my Patreon page if you are interested in how this was built up. I really like this page. There's a lot going on. There might be some parts that are a little overworked perhaps, but I'm pretty happy with the vibe of this. It really has the vibe of the beach we were at. Drawing on our little porch again, enjoying our space there and the view with a cup of coffee. And then we're back on the ferry. And on the forehand, I had played a little bit with collage. I love doing that. It's something you can do sitting on the bed in your hotel room or wherever you're staying. And then the day after, you have something to play with that will challenge you because there's already bits and pieces on the page that you are about to draw on. I started on this page and then later I drew on the ferry and then I kept going on this page. I drew this in the van on our way to the ferry. Then we're on the ferry, quickly drawing the view while we are waving goodbye to Ko Chang. And this is my husband in the van reading, people waiting on the airport, people in line for check-in. And this is also on the airport. Some bits and pieces that I still had, I just glued them in and I drew on top. And of course, I played with my coffee again. And then we're in Bangkok. I'm in the back of this tuk-tuk. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to just draw. It was wobbly. Oh yes, it was, but I did it. And it was really fun to step out of the tuk-tuk and show the driver while the paint was still wet what I did. And he was like, wow, he had no idea that happened while he was navigating the busy, busy traffic in Bangkok. It was fun. And then we're back to some really, really good food. This is one of those memorable dishes that I wrote down in the earlier page I showed you. I drew this in just black line and when we came back to the hotel room, I was looking at it again and I was like, oh, it's missing something, but I didn't want to add any color. And usually I don't really go back to a drawing once I have left the place where I was drawing. But this one, I felt like it missed something and I was just having fun playing in my sketchbook anyway. So I decided to add not color, but gray. And I think that really gives a focal point to this whole story. I'm really happy that I did that. Doing this drawing was so much fun because there were these three little girls that were gathering around looking at me drawing because they were just intrigued by what this strange lady was doing while she was also eating soup. <laughs> she was drawing the place that was their grandmoms, I think. And it was just really fun. They were like, ooh and aww oh, and naming the colors in my color palette in English, which was so cute. They were practicing their English. It was just fun. I was just making friends and a connection for just a few minutes. And this is our last day and also my last page in this sketchbook. We went to Chinatown in Bangkok and I drew these people at their food stall. They were selling dim sum. So we ordered some and while we were eating that, I was drawing them. And because in Chinatown, a lot of the signs are bright red with bright yellow. I chose that as my color palette, although there were a lot more colors to see. I just chose to use those two colors for the things that I wanted to add some color to. I limited my color and I also limited the places where I put color so that this little place with those three ladies who are running this very popular food stall, they are the focus of my story. 
And that's it. I hope that you liked this flip through and the experiences that I shared. And maybe it gives you some ideas to limit your colors or to play with your watercolors and your crayons or whatever you pick up from this. And of course, if you want more ideas or more inspiration, then come join me on Patreon. I have a Patreon page with a lovely community there and I share a lot of content there that is in addition to the weekly videos that I share here on YouTube and you are very, very welcome to come and join. You can find the link to my Patreon page down below in the comment box. And if you want more, why don't you join me online? I have monthly mini workshops. They are 90 minutes and I always come up with an idea for us to work on and it's just really wonderful to draw together, hang out, chat a little bit and also show and tell if you want. So I will put the link below so you can see if any of the current scheduled dates fit you. And of course, I'll see you next week here on YouTube. Bye.